Okay, the next thing that we need to consider is conservation of angular momentum. And so if you recall um, from your mechanics class, the torque is defined to be uh, the time rate of change of the angular momentum. So L is the angular momentum. Okay. And this is um, again defined is also defined to be uh, the cross product of the of the position vector r relative to the point that you're considering the angular momentum um, cross product of that with the force. Now, in this case, um, the uh, uh, position vector r is in this direction, and so is the force. Okay, so they're collinear. It's a basically radial force, and so r cross f is equal to zero. Okay, the, the cross product of the position vector with the force is equal to zero. And this means that, um, that angular momentum is conserved. That is, uh, angular momentum, which is, is equal, which is defined to be um, the position vector um, dot cross, uh, cross the uh, momentum uh, is, is equal to constant. And this is Excuse me. It's a constant of the motion. So this is uh, we're talking about as we discussed before, non-relativistic case. So the momentum p is equal to just m times v, and so what we get is that this is equal to m times r cross v. Okay, and so the velo v is just the velocity vector of the particle at any point along the trajectory. R is the position vector to that point along the trajectory, um, the position vector relative to the scattering center. Okay, and again, because it's conserved, because um, the time rate of change is equal to zero, of this, then this means that um, that when you integrate, then this must be equal to constant. Okay. Okay. Now we know that the um, that the magnitude of a cross product is just r is just the the excuse me, the product of the two magnitudes times sine of the angle, excuse me, between them. And in this case, the angle between R um, and V is, is shown right here, it's phi. And so what we have is that um, the magnitude of, of L, oops, okay, which, uh, let me just, okay, is just equal to m times r times v times sine of phi. Now, um, we sh and since this is a constant, we should be able to figure it out from some limiting case. And the and the easiest limiting case is when we consider when the particle is very far away, basically at minus infinity, so that it's way off here to the left. Before it basically feels the Coulomb uh, repulsion, okay, then. Um, then it's basically going along this trajectory here, indicated by this dotted line. Okay, and so um, and that's a limiting case that we can calculate. So uh, when, uh, or let's just say initially, right? We have that uh, sine of theta. Okay, I mean sorry, sorry, sine of phi. Sine of phi. Uh, is going to be very, very small. The th uh, theta is going to be very, very small. Okay, so sine of phi will be approximately equal to phi, which is going to be um, approximately equal to uh, b over r. Okay, so if we think about something really far away, right, if we think that the angle is really small, then b over, and, and this, then this is going to be r, and this is going to be b, and so, um, we can approximate phi as, as uh, b over r. And so what this means is that L sub, L sub 0, the initial angular momentum, is equal to m r v times b over r. So it's, it's uh, equal to m v b. Okay, and I guess we should call this v sub 0 here. All right, so now we should be able to that's that's the angular momentum of the particle relative to the scattering center at all times because it's a constant. 